Welcome to Over It and On With It. I'm your host, Christine Hassler, and for over a decade, I've been a life coach, speaker, and author. Each week, you'll hear me work directly with a caller as I coach them through a goal they want to accomplish or an obstacle they may be facing. I'll provide a blend of practical and spiritual advice as well as tangible actions you can apply to your own life. Now, let's get on with the episode. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back. I am just so glad to have you here listening to this podcast, and I'm just so excited to be doing this. It's been about two years now, I think, that I've wanted to start a life coaching podcast. I had the idea about two years ago, and you know, at first, it was kind of fear that stopped me, especially the the technology part, um, and then it was just time, and anyway, we all come up with our reasons for why it's not time, and often there's just divine timing for when the appropriate time for things to really launch is. But for me, I knew that it had to be this year. And every year I set a personal, physical, and professional goal for myself. And this year, my professional goal was launching this podcast. And so I'm so happy that it's out there. I'm so happy that you're loving it and it's serving you. And and like I said, I just love doing it. I I love life coaching so much. I love the opportunity to just be with someone as they're going through an insight, an aha, a challenge. And I really feel like the divine uses me in this way. And so thank you. Thank you for your support. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to make one of my dreams come true. So in this session with Nadine that you're about to hear, I was really aware once again of how much expectation hangovers can really suck, to put it bluntly, but can also give us such an opportunity for healing. And as you know, this is an area I'm so passionate about. Expectation hangovers offer us huge opportunities for transformation. And you know from my last book, called Expectation Hangover, that this is something I'm really committed to helping people leverage and heal from. So before we go into the call, I just wanted to teach a little bit more on expectation hangovers, which I do often on this podcast. First of all, they don't just happen, quote unquote, randomly. You know, disappointment is just a part of life. We all have to go through it. And so we don't want to relate to expectation hangovers as victims. You know, we don't want to go, why is this happening to me? And this is just some, you know, I always lose. I I don't ever luck out. We don't want to go into that kind of thinking because then it prevents us from really going into a seeker mindset or a student mindset and really leveraging the learning. So I want to tell you the four main reasons why expectation hangovers happen because commonly we ask. Why is this happening to me? Well, it's really happening for you, and I'm going to tell you why. So first of all, they teach us that control is an illusion. I think the master addiction, the thing every human is addicted to is control. We do not like uncertainty. We do not like not knowing. We like things going a certain way. We like things going our way. So when an expectation hangover happens, it totally surprises us often and throws off that sense of certainty and control. And what we start to learn is that control is an illusion. Sure, we have influence. Sure, we have free will. But if you really think about it, you don't have 100% control. And that's okay. You know, it's nice to know that we're co-creators with spirit or with the universe, whatever word works for you. You don't want to have control over every aspect of your life because then that cancels out the possibility of surprise and miracles. So know that control is an illusion and you don't have 100% of it and that's okay. Lesson number two is your comfort zone is a trap. All of us have a comfort zone, an area that we like to play safe and stay safe in because it's familiar. That's what makes it comfortable. It's not comfortable because it's really for our highest good. It just feels all comfy cozy because it's familiar, you know, like a big old recliner chair that probably needs to be replaced, but because we're comfortable in it, we tend to stay there. So life will often toss an unexpected curveball our way in the form of an expectation hangover. So we get out of our comfort zone because that's where growth happens. That's where the magic happens outside our comfort zone, not in it. And the third lesson is it ain't out there, meaning all that fulfillment, love, happiness, joy, abundance, whatever you're looking for, no external thing is going to do it for you. Whatever you're seeking, you must first find within. And then outer experience becomes a reflection of inner reality. 
So we're forced sometimes to look within when we're in the midst of an expectation hangover. And that's a really great thing. When we lose something, say a relationship or a job, that we credit for our sense of love or a sense of purpose or value, then we have to look within and find it within. You know, we don't want to replace it by yet another relationship or another job. The expectation hangover offers us a window of opportunity to really start living an inside out rather than an outside in life. And the fourth thing is you're not being punished. The universe does not punish us or test us. The universe is totally committed to our growth and development. So any seemingly bad thing is really a good thing because it offers you the opportunity to heal. So I talk so much in this podcast and in the book about how the most important question to ask during an expectation hangover is what am I learning? And another question I want to add to that is what am I healing? So often, as you'll hear in this call with Nadine, an expectation hangover is really triggering an old issue from our past, like way back in our past, like childhood, that we never worked totally through. And the situation of the expectation hangover is catalyzing those old wounds so that we actually heal them and we don't have to stop living kind of the same experience over and over and over again. So as you're listening to this call with Nadine, here are some questions I'd love you to consider. Whatever is going on in your life, whether you're in an expectation hangover or not, what are you learning? What's really up right now in terms of your life curriculum? Or what are you healing? What are some old things that may be coming forward for you to heal for the last time? What is outer experience teaching you about your inner reality? And second, can you relate to putting a lot of pressure on yourself? Are you someone that has such high expectations of yourself? Maybe even relate to yourself as a perfectionist. And finally, do you think there's something you need to do to be loved or worthy? Do you have negative self-talk that kind of perpetuates those high expectations of yourself? So think of those questions and keep that expectation hangover, either one that's fresh or maybe one from your past in mind and consider the opportunity you have to learn and heal as you listen to this call. Hello, Nadine. Welcome to the show. How can I help you? Thank you so much. Um, My question for you is, I, back in February, I found my perfect dream job and also met my perfect dream man. And then in the scope of four months, my boss got let go. And so I was shifted to another position in the company that I really have no interest in. And um, my man left. So I'm just trying to figure out how to get back on track when everything was going so good and then the carpet or the rug just got pulled out from under me. Oh, sweetheart, you have a big old expectation hangover. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my specialty, so I'm happy, I'm happy to help. So uh, it's, what month did you – how long ago was it that the job and the man ended? The man ended about a month ago, mm-hmm. and the job transitioned about two months ago. Two months ago. Okay. Okay. So you're really in it right now. Mm-hmm. So the first thing is, have you really allowed yourself to feel and release your feelings around this? Like, have you allowed yourself just the humanness of the grief? Um, for him, yes. The okay. job, probably not so much. Okay. And is there anything emotionally upsetting about the job? (laughs) Yes. um, It's kind of, I think it's hand in hand with those situations where I feel like I just got put in a corner where I'm not being recognized for who I truly am. Mm. And do you feel like that in your relationship too, that you weren't really seen for who you are? I do. I feel that he didn't see, because of his own things, I don't think he saw the potential. Okay. So the biggest thing that I teach in Expectation Hangover is to, when we're in any of these kind of situations where things didn't turn out like we planned and we're Hmm. sort of going, what is going on? The question to ask is not, why is this happening? But the question Mm -hmm. to ask is, what am I learning? Mm -hmm. So... When you check inside, when you ask your own inner counselor that question, what do you come up with? 
<laughs> I'm learning that I have to uh, trust, trust more and let go of control a little bit. Trust what? The universe. Yes, that's something we're all here to learn. Uh, mm-hmm. However, I think there's a lesson that's a little more specific to you. And I'm going to okay. give, you, I'll give you a hint. Okay. So in, in so many ways, the, we're, we're, we create our reality, right? The universe isn't out there testing us or punishing us or any of those things. It's really reflecting to us what we're creating from our relationship with ourselves inside. So outer experience is often a reflection of what's going on inside. So you said there was a, th- a theme of not being seen, not being mm-hmm. recognized. So given that, what do you think you're really learning here? That I need to be seen. <laughs> well, who's not really seeing you? Me. I'm not seeing myself. I'm not seeing the potential that I have. Correct. Well, and not just potential, sweetheart. See that, see that what you just said, mm-hmm. is a direct reflection of how disconnected you are from how amazing you truly are. So it's almost like you, you, you see your potential, but do you really see and acknowledge how amazing and perfect and whole and complete and worthy you are in this moment? Or do you consistently look at yourself as like a home improvement project? Something that I needs to be fixed. Oh. <laughs> hmm. And what do you think that's creating in your life? Um, never, never living up to what I can do. Yeah, well, and, and yeah. constant self-criticism and self-evaluation. Mm-hmm. Negative self-talk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So there's lots of good news in all this. First of all, you, your soul wouldn't have manifested a, a job transition, which is upsetting, and a breakup, which is upsetting, if you weren't ready to heal this. So this is definitely not about fighting for a job. It's definitely not about trying to get love back from some guy. Mm-hmm. It, it was a, it's really about you healing the core misunderstandings about yourself. So just complete the statement. Don't think too much of it. In order to be loved, I need to... Be me. Well, that's maybe the response after my coaching, but kind of going (laughs) back, (laughs) kind of going back to uh, the more sort of unevolved, unaware place where you were kind of operating from, because we all operate from that place until we we do some work on ourselves. So kind of going back to the old story in order to be loved, I need to love myself. Right. Which is still the evolved statement. Oh God! (laughs) Because I, I have a feeling you're not answering me from the place you created the job and the relationship from. I have a feeling you're answering me from the place of, I need to give Christine the right answer. So let me give you a hint. Okay. It may sound something like this. In order to be loved, I need to do good. In order to be loved, I need to achieve things. In order to I be need loved, to be perfect. I, uh-huh. There you go. Okay, so now you try. So, in order to be loved, I need to be perfect. Mhm. What else? I need to always do the right thing. Uh-huh. So it's like you've got sort of a pressure cooker on yourself mm-hmm. in terms of what you expect of yourself. Mm-hmm. And do you see how sort of your story, whatever story you created about you and your life, has mm-hmm. set up a pattern and a programming that you're sort of not worthy of love just on your own. You have to do something or be a certain way in order to get it. Do you see how that's been a programming that's been operating in your consciousness yes okay and how do you think that's been impacting your life um (laughs) well with relationships it's the same relationship over and over and over again Mm -hmm. and describe that relationship um they're not fully there they're not fully present Mm -hmm. and they always leave Mm mm-hmm 
And does that stem back farther than romantic relationships? Was there a parent or a person in your life in your early age who was like that? Yes, both parents. Both parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. First, I just really want to extend my compassion to you because that's uh, a tough journey to feel like your parents aren't there for you. Mm -hmm. It's a tough journey. So let me ask you this. What's your spiritual practice? What's your spiritual orientation or belief system? Um, well, I'm actually a yoga teacher and a meditation teacher. Beautiful. In, in addition to my full-time job. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and how amazing that you found your way to that because it's like your inner knowing has been a compass toward spirituality because yoga and meditation are definitely forms of spirituality Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your vulnerability and your Mm -hmm. honesty um so you know as you probably know when we're little we're totally connected to spirit I'm just going to use the word spirit it's interchangeable with god lord divine creator whatever you want to use and we know that that's our source but then because we all go through the human experience, at some point that cord gets a little cut off, we forget, and we start to project God on mom and dad. And they become our God. And in so many ways, if, if they are not there, if they abandon us, if we don't feel safe and secure and love for who we are, that really sets up a deep core wound of feeling like we're unlovable or undeserving or something's wrong with us. Mm-hmm. You see that, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you think your parents don't want you, who else is going to want you? Right, right. And do you really think it's true that your parents didn't want you? Um, I don't think it's. I don't think it was a matter of not wanting. I think it was a matter of not being capable. Right. Right. But do you see, as a little girl, you didn't really understand that. Like as a grown woman. You can see that. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, that took a long time. (laughs) Yeah. So just close your eyes for a moment. Mm -hmm. Just imagine you as a little girl, maybe during a time when things got really rough. And how old do you see yourself approximately? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. And what would you say to that 13-year-old girl? What would you say to her from this this place you are now, with love and compassion, what would you say in terms of what she really needed to hear at that time? That everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And that you're a lot stronger than you think. Mm -hmm. What else? That um, you are loved. Well, and what's really important for her to know is that she didn't do anything wrong and it's not her fault. Yeah, she didn't make it happen. Right. 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 And do you see how she's sort of been the one dating for you? Yes. (laughs) And do you see that she's just trying to get the love she never got from mom and dad from men? And in order to do that, she dates men that have similar patterning and similar wounding because it feels the same. And she believes, oh, if I can just get this guy's love, it'll heal this wound inside. Yeah. Yeah. So in a sense, it's been very wise. All the men that you've picked have been perfect. Perfect. Because what's really going on here is your soul is attempting to heal this. Yeah, I don't want to pick them anymore. (laughs) You don't want to what? Pick these same ones anymore. (laughs) Well, and I think even even more than that, you don't want to live your life feeling unworthy and unseen. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to turn to your inner wisdom here for a moment, because we've talked about a lot. 
And mm-hmm. given your yoga and meditation teacher, you probably have a lot of this awareness already. Mm-hmm. Sort of knowing that the job transition and this breakup was was really for you. It's really f- happening because you're you're ready to heal this core wound and let it go. What do you think would be useful in terms of some action steps in your journey? What do you think you could really do to support yourself and heal during this time? Uh, take care of myself. Great. And what does that look Put, like? Putting me first. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, it's a, it's so hard. It's so easy to help, you know, to... Um, I think I need to focus more on what I want to do, like the teaching, mm-hmm. more so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, it's so hard. I don't know. Well, I highly, 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 do you have a copy of my last book, Expectation Hangover? No, but I need to get one. Yes, that will help. I assure you it will help. I, I, I know because... I wrote the book for me first, you know, <laughs> and so I know I know it works, and I highly encourage you to um, to get it and to work through the exercises. And, and if you okay. agree to that, I'll be happy to stay in touch with you as you go. So yeah. if questions come up, you can email me, and I'm happy to to help you through it. And I also would recommend no dating, like yeah. no, no Tinder, no dating, no contact yeah. with any exes. Like, give yourself at least six months of, of no dating. The person you're really dating is yourself. Dive deeper into your spiritual practice and, and really connect with that younger part of you so she knows that she's loved and really reassure her a lot. Mm-hmm. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. So in this moment, just a last question here. You know, I noticed there's a little emotion present. Uh-huh. And I want I want to check in with you. How are you with that emotion being present? Um, I'm okay with it. Good. Sometimes it comes up when I don't want it to, <laughs> but um, I'm okay with it because I know I need to feel what I'm feeling instead of holding it in. Right. That's great wisdom, and you know, and, as a yeah, go ahead. Oh, and it, it's okay. It's okay that I'm sad that, mm-hmm. you know, um, I I feel like I lost my best friend. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. I mean, um, it's difficult from going to speaking to somebody every day to not speaking to them at all. Mm-hmm. But it's okay. Yeah. And I know he's got the right to make the choices that he made. And, you know, and I have the right to make the choices. And I didn't make bad choices. It just, right. It just, that's just the way that it is. Exactly. He was perfect. He's the perfect spiritual teacher for you right now. You know, and he might have been the catalyst that got you to this point and got you on this call and is really getting you into your healing journey even more so. And I love right. that you're aware of, of honoring your feelings, not mm-hmm. indulging in them, but having compassion. No judgment, no rationalizing, just allowing yourself to feel them. Just like you witness thoughts float across a a mental screen when we're meditating, right? Or just Mm -hmm. how in yoga we allow ourselves to feel and breathe into any discomfort and oppose. Rather than resist it or try to get out of it, we stay, we hold. Mm -hmm. So you have so much wisdom and so much love and all that love that you you have given to others and all that energy you've put out in the world, I mm-hmm. just invite you to receive it because you're a really good lover. And I don't mean like in a romantic relationship only. I just mean I can feel you have a lot of love inside of you and you give it to so many people, even the students you teach. So mm-hmm. it's why deprive yourself of that? Make sure that you're just basking in your own love and the love from your higher power, whatever that means to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You're in a beautiful place. I know it doesn't feel great, <laughs> but it's, it's a beautiful place for growth and spiritual ascension. So I've, I've, I'm with you on the path. I'm cheering you on. 
And I know that you're going to get to the other side of this with so much more healing and wisdom. So much, much, much light and many blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such a rich time for Nadine and anyone out there going through a similar situation. Before I break down this call and leave you with some takeaways, I always like to get a little update from the people I coach and share it with you. So I wanted to read you this update from Nadine. Uh, And she updated me probably about a month after our call. She wrote, I'm focusing on my teaching, yoga and meditation, and I'm starting a nonprofit to bring compassion and service back to our communities. As for the relationship part, I'm learning to let go of expectations and trust more that things are exactly as they should be. I'm still working on my lovability factor. It's an ongoing process. While I know in my head I'm a pretty terrific person, it's actually hard for me to feel it. I get it, Nadine, and I still am cheering you on. And oh my gosh, you've already made so much great progress that you're getting back into your teaching, that you're focusing on service, that you're letting go of expectations. And the whole thing about knowing we're lovable, like intellectually, but really feeling it, not really feeling it, I get that. We have so much wiring around our story and around all the misunderstandings and limiting beliefs. And even though intellectually we know that we're worthy and loved and complete, it takes a while to feel it. And it it just takes practice. You know, it took a long time for this programming to get in. So, you know, give it some time to get out. But if you really stick with it and you stick with some of these assignments that I gave Nadine and that I'm going to give you, you'll start to feel the shifts. It's so, 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 so important to really love yourself, really, truly love yourself. And think about it. That doesn't mean you have to be perfect. You know, think about someone that you love. Are they perfect? No. You love them despite their imperfections, despite their quirks, despite the things they do that like annoy you, right? So loving ourselves is really about radical self-acceptance and celebration of who we are and where we are right now. You know, Nadine said something about she knows she has great potential and she can love that. Oh my gosh, please don't fall in love with your potential. It's great that you have it. Yes, awesome. But your potential or some future version of you is not what's lovable. You are lovable right here, right now, just as you are. So fall in love with who you are in the present And yes, no, we have infinite potential. That's what's so amazing about the human experience is we grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And who knows what we may become, but who we are as lovable human beings never changes. Okay, so let's dive into this call a little bit. We uncovered Nadine's programming and we all have programming, like I mentioned before. And you have to really understand kind of what your programming is. What's your story? What are the messages you got growing up? Or what are the beliefs that you formed as a result of things that happened to you? And if you want to do more work on that, you can refer to Expectation Hangover. Just pick up a copy of the book. Or if you have the book, you can do the storyboard exercise again. But there's a whole part in the mental section about really how to work through your story. Because you got to know what your story has been in order to unprogram it and write a new story. So one key thing that I want to point out, especially since this was a relationship-based call, is we don't heal our wounds through other people. They can't heal it for us. That's our job. So a lot of times when we have some core wounding around our parents not feeling loved or around relationships, we look for a romantic relationship, a partner to make us feel lovable, to heal that kind of void inside. And no one else can ever do that for you, which is why a lot of times people keep attracting the same unavailable person over and over and over that keeps playing out their pattern. Because until we evolved the point where we realize, hey, I got to fix this inside of me. No one else can do it for me. We keep attracting the same kind of people. So if you have a lot of wounding around love and relationships, my advice to you is to spend some time single and to really work through some of those old issues that have been haunting you for a long time and and fall in love with yourself. The relationship that you should be 100% committed to right now is yourself. So learn how to partner yourself. So I want to give you some things to work with, some assignments and takeaways from this call. The first is a writing exercise, and this will help you start to understand your programming around love. 
So I'm just going to give you a sentence starter and write as much as you can for this because the thing with journaling is sometimes it takes a while to get warmed up. So you don't want to just write one sentence. You want to put pen to paper and write as much as, as you can. So the sentence stem is in order to be loved, dot, dot, dot. So that could sound like in order to be loved, I have to be perfect. In order to be loved, I have to take care of the other person. In order to be loved, I have to weigh this amount or whatever it may be, but really get clear about what you need to do in order to be loved. A second assignment is talking to the younger part of you, you know, going back and talking to the little boy or the little girl who felt unloved and reassuring them and asking them what they need. And the third thing is self-care, making sure that you're meeting your own needs beyond just making sure that you're sleeping, eating, exercising. What do you really need to feel loved? Think about the people in your life that you love and how you care for them. How can you apply that same nurturing to yourself? And next, allow your emotions to come up. If you're in a breakup or an expectation hangover, it's normal to feel sad. You want to release your emotions, not identify with them. And how you release them is allow yourself to feel them with compassion. And like I mentioned before, if love and relationship is a perpetual expectation hangover, consider a dating hiatus and date you. And finally, please stop being a self-improvement project. (laughs) Please stop working on yourself from the mindset that something is wrong with you. Stop thinking of it as work. Just think of it as loving yourself. Any type of healing or personal growth work you do is not because you're broken, It's because you want to evolve. It's because you want to grow. It's because you want to really live into the fullness of who you are. So there's nothing wrong. You're not a self-improvement project. Move into full acceptance of who you are. And then you can become who you truly want to be. So thanks again for listening. I always love to hear your comments and questions about each episode. And you can find those over on the show notes at christinehassler.com slash podcast. And if there's any way I can serve you, if you have questions about an expectation hangover you may be going through, you can ask me there. For now, remember that every expectation hangover is a huge window. Actually, not even a window. That's too small. A huge doorway to incredible healing and transformation. I hope this episode served you and I'm sending you much love and many blessings. Thank you for listening to Over It Non With It. I love hearing from you. So please post your comments or questions at christinehasler.com slash podcast. That's also the place you can sign up to receive coaching from me in an upcoming episode. And if you love this show, please share it and subscribe on iTunes. You can find all my social media handles and sign up to be part of my community at christinehasler.com. Until next week, here's to getting over it and on with it. Much love and many blessings. 